Hello. A number of people have requested that I do a follow up video to the one I originally did in last May. And so here it is. So let's jump in and look at the look at the data here. So so here here are the numbers now this is the weekly excess numbers this is again straight from the cdc uh, same format as before we just have extra data from last time as you clearly can see uh 2018 there was a spike in the flu season and here you see in in about march april we definitely see a spike in the overall deaths in the united states and this looks like it continues certainly into February and then uh, now in July, August, we're definitely seeing another spike. So uh, one thing to notice that's very interesting to me is that uh, never before, when you see the spike, you see it starts here usually like December and peaks in January, February every year. It is very interesting to me this year that we saw a much earlier spike in July. Uh, usually the flu season is correlated with low vitamin D because people don't get out in the sun. So you see increase uh, in the flu. And it's very interesting that you're having a uh, bump here starting in midsummer, if you will. Um, if we break it down by XX deaths, so this is with and without COVID, you see that uh, clearly there's a spike here. Uh, in death rate in 2018, but the COVID spikes uh, really did start uh, here in, in about April. One other thing that's interesting to note here is that all cause mortality is definitely above baseline almost the whole time up until about January here. But you see all cause mortality is increased, which is very fascinating to me because, you know, there's a lot of people saying that they're uh, labeling any sort of death as COVID, but there's actually, uh, despite that, there's increase in overall death rate. Um, so do what you will with that. Um, and then, uh, of course, this this uh, data hasn't changed. Obviously, the older you are, if you're over 75 and 65, your risk of dying is definitely higher with COVID than it is for young people. If you look at, you're under 25, the risk is really unchanged. Um, if we go state by state, uh, let's just pick a few uh, states. So here's California. So again, you see a massive spike here in December of last year. It's also interesting to me to compare it with the uh, vaccination rates. So here's California. Again, so vaccines started about April 1 of 2020. So if we go back to here and look uh, April of 2020. So if we go here to April of 2021 is really where the vaccines started. Uh, but despite these vaccines, we're seeing a massive spike in the summer. And that's very, very interesting. And it kind of varies uh, different states. You can see the vaccine rollout here starting in uh, the fall, like November, and then getting this big uh, spike. And it's interesting to see how that would that has changed this graph. Um, you know, I live in Idaho here, and Idaho is a little more confusing. Uh, if you look at the 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 trends here, yes, there's definitely spikes um, over here in April. It looks like it was definitely lower. Uh, New York is always very interesting to look at. They had a massive spike here, and you can decide what the cause of that was, but I think it's certainly interesting the way they manage the nursing home situation in New York, uh, especially New York City. Um, and then they had a massive spike again here over during the flu season, and now again, they're getting uh, a spike, not as impressive, but certainly during the summer. Um, again, Florida similar kind of picture. So there's absolutely a spike. It is interesting to me again, though, that you see an increase in overall death here. So, um, you know, attribute that to what you will. 
Uh, it is interesting to me if we look at suicide deaths, again, this is from the CDC, uh, 12 month provisional drug overdose deaths. And so you're seeing a definite spike. So it looks like it was hanging out around 68,000, 67,000. And then, you know, starting here in January, you're seeing a massive increase up to 94,000. That's a big increase. So for some reason, drug overdose have gone up. And I've tried looking up the suicide data, but uh, I think it's difficult to find. At least I had a tough time finding clear recent suicide data, but it is interesting. Um, make of it, make of it what you will. Uh, I've even had patients tell me, you know, their husband was supposed to get surgery for cancer, but then uh, everything shut down due to COVID. So he was not considered an emergency. Um, and so he ended up dying of cancer. So uh, make what you will of that data. One other thing I wanted to highlight, um, actually two other things here. Let me, let me just show you. The overall death, death rate. Um, so in the US every year, you look in 20, 2017, 2018, uh, just comparing it to COVID, about 650,000 people die every year of heart disease. And then cancer, malignant neoplasms are right behind it at 600,000. So it's interesting to keep that in mind of where, where um, uh, COVID fits into this. And also for yourself, uh, focus on lifestyle, things you can control. So one other uh, thing that's very, very interesting, this comes from the BBC here, COVID map, Corona uh, virus deaths and vaccination, vaccination by countries. Now, uh, you can see, you know, United States uh, has been hit really hard, you know, India, and and uh, and then over here, the same article I just uh, opened up in a different window. You can look overall. It's very interesting to me. Africa has not really been hit hard by this, and you know South America, uh, similar longitude latitude here, uh, has been hit a lot harder. So that's that's an interesting point. Uh, something else to see is that's very interesting because I know a number of interesting journal articles have come out of uh, Israel. So Israel has given about 160 doses per 100 people. So very high uh, vaccination rates. So this is a global vaccine rate. And if we look here at Israel's death uh, uh, numbers, here, here it is, Israel. Uh, you're looking at about 86 deaths per 100,000. So this is deaths per 100,000. So Israel's got 86 deaths per 100,000. If we look at their next door neighbor and they've got like a 70, uh, a very high vaccination rate here. Um, so 160 doses, so 1.6 doses for every person. Now let's look at their neighbor right next door in Palestine. So if we look at the Palestinian territories, so here it is, they have a much lower vaccination rate, 26.7 doses per 100 people. And let's look at their death rate here. So the Palestinian territories have a 76.6, which is actually lower than Israel. So, and they have like a 10% vaccination rate uh, if you count the fully vaxxed people. So <laughs> interesting data there, because you would think they should correlate, you know, very linearly, and they clearly don't. Um, so those are just a few uh, insights. Um, interesting, I'll put a link to the uh, sources that I used. Um, like always, my passion is always to help keep people healthy and uh, boost your immune system, do everything you can to stay healthy and stay uh, out of those statistics. Uh, have a great day, everyone.